Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 42. This week I'm going to be talking about optically triggering one flash from another. So first off, let me explain what I mean by optically triggering. Uh, a lot of flashes, such as this Young New 460, has a little light diode in it that basically detects when another flash has gone off, any kind of bright flash of light, and then it will trigger itself. Uh, this Canon flash does not have this feature, but we're going to be using the Canon flash as a master in this case, and then we'll use this Young New as a slave. Now, the advantage of this is that you don't need to have cables running to all of the different flashes. You can just have one flash being triggered from the camera axe or from your camera, and then these other flashes will go off. Now, the problem that we're going to be investigating this week is whether the delay for this optical triggering system is uh, acceptable for high-speed photography. It's also worth pointing out that even though this Canon flash doesn't support being an optical slave natively, you can buy these cheap dongles that plug into the hot shoe that would turn it into an optical slave flash. So here's the setup that we're going to be using to measure the delay between triggering this master flash and when light is emitted from this optically triggered slave flash. This button here will trigger this master flash and we also have this button hooked up to channel 1 of the scope. So channel 1 will display when uh, the button is pressed and we're also going to trigger the scope on that event. And channel 2 of the scope is hooked up to this light sensor over here and this will uh, be detecting the light coming out of the slave flash. So the time between the edge of channel 1 and the edge of channel 2 is the amount of time that we have between when uh, we try to trigger flash 1 and when we try to, or when we actually see light coming out of flash 2, which is exactly what we want. So let's trigger it. And what we see here is that uh, the triggering of the uh, master flash happens at zero microseconds and then flash two is kind of around the slave is maybe 115 microseconds or so so that's the amount of time uh, between triggering the master and when the slave is emitting light now to make sense of that 115 microsecond number, I looked back to episode number 35 in our blog and I had measured the flash lag for the two flashes I had just used. Now the flash lag is just the amount of time from when that flash is triggered to when it's emitting light. And I found that for the Canon flash it was 60 microseconds and uh, for the Young New flash it was 55 microseconds. Now if you add those times together you get 115 microseconds which is the amount of time I just measured for the optically triggered slave flash to emit light. Now, it turns out that that's pretty much what I expected because uh, the optically triggering sensor is probably just a light diode, which should be uh, triggered in well under one microsecond. So we just have to add both of these together. That's because in order to tr trigger the second flash, the first flash has to be emitting light, which takes 60 microseconds. And then after the second flash is triggered, it'll take another 55 microseconds for it to start emitting light. And that's where I get the 115 microseconds. So everything is uh, making sense here. Now, let's try to put that into some perspective for how... Um, how it'll affect high-speed photography because we know that in most cases this kind of a system is used and uh, people don't notice the the lag of the second flash um, but uh, for us we're going to be focusing on this 55 microseconds because that's the uh, delay from when the first flash is emitting light until when the second flash is emitting light so is that 55 microseconds going to matter in high-speed photography? For a first use case, let's uh, 
take a, a bullet, which is pretty much the worst case. So that's going to be traveling about a thousand feet per second, which is 12,000 inches per second. Now, if you multiply 12,000 by 55 microseconds, you're going to get 0 0.6 inches. That's the distance traveled in 55 microseconds by the bullet. So you're basically going to have two images of the bullet. It's not going to look very good in this case. This is pretty much going to look like a bad shot because you're going to have uh, two different images, one for the, when the first flash went off and one for the when the second flash got off. Um, I'll also point out that a bullet will be a bit blurry uh, with these standard flashes because the flash duration is about 30 microseconds, which is something I measured in a previous blog. And so you're, you're really looking at a pl just during the flash duration, the bullet will travel about a third of an inch. But this extra, you know, 0.6 inches is just going to make the, the photo look poor. So you don't want to use it for bullets. Let's try something a little bit slower, such as droplet photography. I kind of estimate that a droplet will be moving about 8 feet per second when you take the picture, which turns into 96 inches per second. Now, if you multiply that by the 55 microseconds, I get about 5 thousandths of an inch which seems like it should be fine. I mean, that, that's not very much distance. However, when you take into account the fact that um, you're taking maybe an inch tall droplet and you're expanding, you, you know, you're using a macro lens to really make it large. Let's say you're, you're taking that inch image and you're making it into a 10 inch photograph. So um, that's going to be a 10x increase. So now we're talking about uh, five one hundredths of an inch in the photo. So that still seems like not very much distance. Um, let's say that you're, instead of doing a photo, you're, you've got a monitor and uh, monitors are typically around 100 dpi. So that means if you've got your 10 inch image on your monitor you're talking about five pixels and that that's something that that people are going to notice so you're, you're talking about a five pixel shift in the image from when the the first photo was taken to when the second photo was taken so you're going to have what appears to be you know five pixels of blur and that that's something that people are going to notice um it's not going to look perfect and this kind of agrees with what people have uh seen on the forums, they, they see that if you're using um, an optically triggered slave flash, you get a little bit of blur on that droplet photo. So uh, I guess I'm, I'm going to sort of summarize by saying that, yeah, this optically triggering uh, a slave flash works a lot of the time for photography, but when you're doing high speed photography, it's going to be noticeable, this, this small 55 microsecond lag. And uh, I just suggest that uh, you trigger your flashes with a uh, wired connection, like with uh, the multi-flash uh, board that I've uh, done a blog about. So I'll put links to these other blogs in the show notes for this episode. And uh, I hope that people found this educational. Thanks for watching.